Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is the Garden State Film Festival, and from March 21 to 24, the Garden State Film Festival transforms Asbury Park and Cranford into a cinematic paradise, showcasing over 200 films from 14 countries in eight venues. The festival is a celebration of diversity, creativity, and the art of storytelling, with a variety of films engaging panels, live podcasts, and not-to-be-missed parties. Today, I'm super excited to be here with our film, The Nanny, with Brian Reynolds and Gigi Moore. Hi. Hi. How Hello. are you? I'm super excited to, to come to the Garden State Film Festival. It's been on our calendar since the beginning, and it's uh, the last film festival that we're showing The Nanny at. It and is? Yeah, you, you, you've been, you, you, we very specifically sort of wanted our film festival cycle to end with Garden State Film Festival. So to be selected and, and was a dream come true and, and to be honored to be part of the, the program, it, it really was, you know, something we, we dreamed about and we, you know, worked to make happen. And we really appreciate uh, your, you folks accepting us. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, and I love the film. I don't want to give away too much for the audience because you have to see it. It is amazing. Like, so what was the inspiration behind it and how did everything go? And Gigi, you were involved in post-production, I hear, so I would love to talk about that. I'm an editor, so I'm always looking for things. Uh, yeah, so the inspiration was I have, uh, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of clients that where I've got to travel the world with them. I've gotten to experience, you know, parts of the globe that I wouldn't necessarily otherwise have access to. And at the same time, I was always part of the uh, entourage or I was always part of, you know, being the support system for the person that I was traveling with. And it's a very strange uh, experience. It's very, it's very different energy to be in really unbelievable places. I mean, I've, I've gotten to, you know, pet wild elephants and, and you know, see, see giraffes in the wild and things like that. And at the same time, I'm an employee and I have a job and it's not really my space. It's not really my hotel room. It's not really my cabana or whatever. It's, it's, it's somebody else has provided it for me. And so I really started thinking about how how different an experience this is than, than, than a lot of jobs. And I wanted to, being a writer, I wanted to sort of, you know, take this energy or this feeling to my job and translate it into a script. And I love thrillers. I'm, a, I'm obsessed with thrillers. I've, I've seen every thriller I can lay my hands on. So I was naturally drawn to the idea of making it a thriller. Um, and then, you know, just sort of basics of thrillers. I wanted to make the stakes as high as possible as I could. So I tried to find a job that someone couldn't just walk away from. Someone couldn't just say, well, this is scary or this is, this is unsettling or creepy or whatever. I'm just going to leave this job. I'm going to quit. I'm going to get out of here. So, uh, and also I wanted the job to be really high stakes. I wanted it to be important and you know, what could be more important than taking care of a helpless human who's wow. just come into this world. So that that set the, the the stage for this young girl. She's come to the US, she's come to this wealthy, you know, couple's summer home, and she's got to take care of their infant uh, in a situation that becomes increasingly more unsettling and eventually dangerous. So I have goosebumps just thinking about it. Oh well thank you. Thank you. It's like you're going to be talking out loud, but you're in the theater, so you can't. But you're like, no, go here, go there. What, what, what is this? And then you're trying to figure out everything. Really suspenseful and amazing. But let's talk about Brian. You directed this film and you wrote it? Correct. Yeah, I wrote it and I directed it. And I'm very fortunate that I have this amazing team that allows me to create, to, I mean, we all create it, but like to create my work. Uh, my producer, Morgan McDouglas, uh, who's been my champion since the day we met, uh, has produced so many things of mine, including plays, short films. This is our first feature together. Um, and she is 
incredible uh, to to pull together the resources and the crew and the talent uh, in the middle of COVID, and you know, uh, to to have everything staged. Uh, we had we had the location, and we also had a house where you know the the talent and some of the crew lived. So to coordinate all of that and transpo and all other stuff, and it's, we're a very small team. Um, so it was basically all on her, uh, especially in pre-production and uh, production. We did have another producer, Kimberly Connolly, who's amazing, who also did a lot of work. So it was this two-person team that, you know, did all of the, I mean, really complicated, heavy lifting stuff so that I could, you know, play with the DP and, and, and talk to the actors and, and create the film that I had envisioned uh, with their support. And I, I'm just, I'm so lucky to have such, you know, powerful people who believe in my work and, and want to see it come to life. And, and uh, so I couldn't, couldn't be more proud of, of what we've created as a team. It's amazing. And with a strong narrative and well-developed characters, like, you're watching it and then it just keeps going on and your mind is like, wait a minute, but that, and then this, and then that one, and this one, like, what's it like being in your mind for you to write that? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's interesting. The nanny, I, I have two different modes of writing. Uh, I have a, I have probably about 20 to 30% of my scripts. I do a lot of plotting. Um, I just finished a high script that involved a lot of outlining. I had a lot of graph paper taped up to my hallway walls and making sure everything mm -hmm. was in line. Uh, the nanny was the other type. The, the nanny was the type where it, it, it was in my head for a minute. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to write it. And I wrote it in three days. Um, what? Yeah. Yeah. I, I sat down, I wrote it in three days and um, I just came pouring out of me. And then uh, did a pass. Um, Samantha McDouglas, who is a part of the two man uh, company, is an amazing writer and editor uh, on her, in her own right. She took a look at it, pointed out some plot holes, pointed out some problems, did a rewrite. Then we did a table read and just through the process of, you know, reading it and table reading it and things like that, we, you know, we, we, I, I, for me, especially with thrillers, I want to make sure all the dots connect. Mm -hmm. And I especially want if you watch it twice. And first of all, if you watch it once, thank you so much. And if you watch it twice, wow, what a gift to any creator for someone to go back and watch your work a second time. But what if people watch it a second time as a thriller, I want them to not be able to spot any flaws. I want everything to make sense, even the second time, even if you know everything that's going on from the beginning. I want it to all make sense. And then uh, we we went ahead and did uh, about 40 hours of rehearsal with the actors. Wow. Uh, before we ever got to set. Um, and in that time period, we, we would talk to all the actors about what was happening in each scene, what, you know, all the different elements that were in play for each scene, each moment, so that when we arrived on set, everyone was on the same page. They, everyone knew what was going on in the moment. And then our script supervisor, Jamie Hughes, kept us on track in terms of like, you know, this needs to be here, or, or this is the, you know, the costume, or this is, you know, all that stuff. She made sure that everything that was, was in my head came out correctly on screen. Um, yeah, the nanny just came out of me, and and uh, once I was done, I I, I kind of it was a little bit of a disassociative moment. Of I looked back and I reread it, and I went, oh, this is really fun. You know, I really like I I want to see this movie, and um, luckily now I now I get to sit in the theater and, and watch it, and uh, and there's nothing there's nothing quite like sitting in the theater with an audience, and and like you know a moment's coming. And then the moment happens and they have a reaction and I'm like, oh, yes, they they reacted to that or they had a moment where they had an emotional experience with it, which makes me really happy. Right. When you're like, don't go in there. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Stop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, my that. gosh. And then the language, too. But let's Gigi, tell us about your experience with the whole film production and how you thought it went. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Well, what a privilege to get to be a part of Brian's process. Um, I got to see the film before there was any color correction or any ADR, any of mm -hmm. the post-production elements um, that I was able to be a part of. And I fell in love with the story. It really gripped me. And I think that the narrative pulls all the way throughout. And to Brian's point, when I watch it the second, the third, the fourth time, all of the pieces fall together so perfectly and I just get to appreciate something new every time that I see it. Um, but then as far as um, post-production, I think my favorite part of the entire process was probably um, the music. I mean, the score is absolutely wonderful. Um, Jeff Tinsley did an amazing job. And so getting to be a part of the process of Brian working with him and an orchestra in Budapest and getting to uh, see how all of the musical elements really add to the tension and to those moments where, you know, things are coming around the bend and the music is telling you exactly what's going on in the moment um, was just a wonderful part of the process. That's amazing. And guess what? The Garden State Film Festival has a movie music competition so that the scores stand out on their own. The film doesn't have to be submitted. You can just submit the tracks. But yeah, the music and everything. So let's, you just mentioned Budapest. Let's go back to like the language in this film and what made you pick Finland and all of that. And then also, what can we mention that we won't give stuff away? Because in my head, I'm like, oh, I don't want to say that because of this where I love the police officer in the beginning and then full circle, like, but I don't, what can we say to not? <laughs> yeah. What, what I'll say, what I'd like to say to anyone who's thinking about coming and seeing my film is I have a deep respect for thrillers. I have a deep respect for audiences. And from the beginning of the film, like the first scene with the nanny and the sheriff, I, I really tried to set the tone and I really tried to make a promise to my audience mm -hmm. of what the journey was going to be like. And the feedback we've received is we have, we have honored our promise. We've kept our promise. If you sit down, if you like thrillers or if you're just interested in thrillers, we, I believe we deliver a great experience. And if, if you're like me, I, I like to go into th thrillers knowing as little as possible mm -hmm. um so so it's always it's uh, this is always the balance right uh, when when you try to promote your film or you try to you know figure out how you're going to advertise your film or what the poster is going to be or what the trailer is going to be is like how can i show the audience or how can i how, how can i give the audience uh, a taste of what they're going to get from the film so that they know whether or not they want to come see it without you know without it's a thriller without giving too much away mm -hmm. uh, i will say that uh the sheriff uh hayes i always call him hayes because i can't pronounce his last name and i feel bad about that it's a very it's a <laughs> but hayes hayes was amazing he was actually the only person who auditioned everyone else in the wow. film i had worked with before uh georgia gould uh who plays the nanny and angela sour plays robin had been in a play of mine my friend phil abrams plays the lawyer and he's been in a million things and he, he did, you know, he came into our film as a favor to me and I, I couldn't be happier with his performance. And then Adam Kitchen was in a short film of mine that won a bunch of awards um, and he's amazing. So we are going to take you on a ride. We are going to, uh, we're going to do our best to fool you without lying to you. So that's our, that's mm -hmm. our goal. And, you know, I, I've actually had people figure out the film very, very early. Like they watch it and they're like, oh yeah. Oh, I think wow. Yeah. Like I had one person tell me that they figured it out in the opening scene and I was like, okay, what? did you still enjoy it? They're like, yeah, I loved it. I'm like, that's all you can ask for. Like I, some people you're going to, some people you're going to keep them guessing to the end. Some people are going to be ahead of you. That's just, that's just the nature of telling a story. And, uh, we, you know, my, my, I'm very, I feel very honored that people, regardless of their experience on the twists and turns have said, I love the ride. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I, I hope people will come, come enjoy the ride with us. And, and I, I want to circle back to Jeff because you mentioned the, uh, the film music, uh, competition, the Garden State Film Festival has, which I I can't. That's so amazing. Thank you so much for doing that. That is such an amazing opportunity for composers. And 
Jeff actually won an award in the Garden State Film Festival for one of the pieces from The Nanny. Um, and I couldn't be happier for him. He's he's an amazing human being and an amazing artist as well. So That's amazing. Oh my gosh, such a great film. Is there any last things that we want to leak a little bit or tell people? But the film is going to play at the Jersey Shore Art Center, which is a beautiful historic theater, Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. The block code is JS25 for Jersey Shore Art Center 25, and it starts at 6.15. So you come and you sit down, there's a host for the film block, you watch all the films in the whole block, then at the end there's a Q&A. Um, and then we have filmmaker lounges if you want to continue the conversation beyond the film block. But it's just so great, and the color, I love watching everything technical and with the post-production and watching the edits and seeing if it's going to be cut on the move and if there's any errors and I love all that stuff. So Gigi watching it from before it was even touched going through the whole process. Isn't it amazing when you're like what it was versus what it comes out to be as transformative. Yeah. It's a while getting to see the process from start to finish and seeing what a spectacle uh, it, it turns out with. That's yeah. I, I think the first time uh, Gigi even saw it, it, it was on my laptop. And it was the scratch audio from the cameras. Mm -hmm. So like it was literally just like it was we were I think we were two days or three days away from picture lock. And so for mm -hmm. her, and and to have Gigi come on board and like she kept so many elements on track because um, we had so many moving parts, um, everything from the music to the color correction to the VFX. We don't have a lot, but we have a, we have enough. We uh, we had an AADR session just to clean up some things that, you know, the sound didn't quite. Uh, by the way, shout out to our sound person, uh, Rebecca. She, I I mean, like, first of all, she she wrote in at the last minute. We we'd had someone who had to drop at the last minute, and and she came in at the last minute and gave us the cleanest, most beautiful sound mm -hmm. on every single take. Um, she would she's crawling under tables and on top of trees and hanging off of you know hanging off of trellises to get good sound with her boom and i, I just like i mean good sound is so critical for uh for you know movies like i i can mess up a camera angle and people don't necessarily ding me on it for the film but like you mess up the sound and it's like people it just takes people out so rebecca was an absolute goddess of sound and and we couldn't have been you know more lucky to have her on set and getting getting what she got and and um yeah but so jillian didn't hear any of that sound the first time through she heard just <laughs> off, of the, off the camera tracks um and then jillian took took it all and and you know, coordinated with all the different departments and, and all the, you know, we're, we're a small company. So everything was, you know, out of, out of house. So she was, she was coordinating with, I don't know, nine, 10 different companies all simultaneously to bring it all together. And, and uh, just did an amazing job with that. So we're lucky to have her as part of our team for sure. That's awesome. So do you take a lot of notes? I'm always like handwriting things, taking the script and just like, Oh, this and that. And what's your process like Gigi? Um, I like to use a blend of handwritten and also digital notes. Um, and I've actually learned a lot from Brian in terms of actually going in and editing on PDFs. Um, he's got mm -hmm. a great iPad system, which is really easy to do because it's portable. So for me, always having something to, um, to use there. But yeah, I think also just doing things that are really fun and that you're passionate about, like getting to work with Brian and the team and see exactly what is going to happen with the finished product and knowing what we're working towards. I think that is the best thing to keep anything on track, just doing what's fun and what you're passionate about um, and where you can really see the art all coming together. It's so beautiful. And, and if I may, I, I'd like to give one, I'd like to just talk to a potential audience really quick. I, I, I think that this is a movie that it's not necessarily like a big budget, like spaceship shooting things in terms of Seeing on a big screen. Oh! Here's a reason I think it should be oh! on a big screen. Is uh, yeah, your, your dog agrees with me. This <laughs> yeah. uh, shout out to your, One, your yeah. pup. To your pup. Um, 
I think it's a community uh, film. I think that being in the theater and getting to experience it with other human beings really adds to it. Um, so, and both Jillian and I will be there. Um, and we love meeting people. We love talking to people. So Jillian and I will be there for the entire festival. Um, we're, we're getting in uh, Thursday during the day. We're not leaving yes. till Monday morning. Yes. So we'll be available. Please come up and, and uh, you know, if you're a creator, I want to hear about your work. If you, if you, you know, can stop by and see our film, would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, good, bad, indifferent. I'm, I'm always, I'm always, I always want to hear what people's experiences are with our film. But I really do feel like with our film, there's something about sitting in a theater and going through that journey with a group of people. So we hope to see you there. I'm so excited you're going to be there the whole time. So Thursday is Meet the Filmmaker event at the Asbury Lanes. It's 7 to 9.30. We have a cocktail hour and then about an hour's worth of selected trailers so everyone can get ready and prepared for the other film blocks that you want to see. Friday night is our big um, star-studded gala cocktail reception. So the filmmakers, you have a secret time. You enter the door. So we'll tell you that as we get closer. But public comes in at 7 o'clock. And then starting at 8.30, we have the amazing feature, The Martini Shot, starring uh, Matthew Modine and a whole bunch of others. So you should check everything out. And it's his birthday. What? Matthew Ooh. Modine's birthday. Yeah. So wow. we'll have a little surprise. I mean, I've been, I've been watching Matthew anymore. Modine. It feels like my whole life. He is such a great actor. Yeah, he's, he's so amazing. nice. Oh my gosh, yeah. amazing. And yeah. then there's an after party for those that can hack it and stay up late unless you need to go to sleep. And then Saturday morning, there's a filmmaker breakfast at 830. Then we roll right into a panel discussion. It's open to the public. You can buy tickets. The panel is 930 to 11. You're not going to want to miss it. And then a fun part on Saturday, we stop everything um, to have a happy hour from 5 to 6 o'clock at the Berkeley Oceanfront Hotel in the Johnny and June room. Why is it called that? Because Johnny Cash used to own the Berkeley Oceanfront Hotel. So you'll see a whole bunch. There's really cool wallpaper with Johnny and June all over it. Um, so it's super fun. What else? And then... Um, we have a screenplay competition as well on Sunday, uh, March 24th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 is the screenplay feature winner. And we have a live table read of that. So that's just a little bit of what's going on. So I'm super stoked that you're going to be there. And we do live podcasts on set during the festival. So it'll be super exciting. That's so yeah. awesome. We're excited. So go to uh, gsff.org. That's G for Garden State Film Festival.org. And uh, thank you to all of our sponsors, our board, our crew, and to our wonderful filmmakers. We can't do what we do without you. So thank you so much. And thanks for being here with us. We're super, I think it's like 34 days. I don't know what the countdown is, but we will see you soon. And um, Check us out at our next interview coming up soon, everybody. Thank you so much and have a great night. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.